Hello everybody, I'm Evelyn. I'm one of the docents at the Everson Museum. I'm home in my studio today and I was going to give you a virtual art lesson. We really miss everybody. We miss all the students that come to the museum and we miss all our friends from outreach. I want to give a shout out to the um, our friends at the VA hospital who always do an amazing job. We really miss you all and we hope you enjoy this new thing we're doing, the virtual art lesson. So this lesson is going to be about still life. Still life is one of the favorite um, types of painting that people enjoy seeing at the museum and artists really enjoy painting. You know, Van Gogh and his famous sunflowers. And we have some samples right at our museum and I'm going to show you some slides in a, in a minute that you can look at. You can take your time and talk about them if there's somebody there with you and just enjoy them for a few minutes. The last slide I showed you was a painting by Jonas Lai, and it's called The Black Teapot. And that's a good example of still life and a good example of a floral still life. And that's what we're going to do today. And flowers are just beautiful and they're just a reminder to us in our everyday life that there's beauty all around us. And sometimes that's what art's about. It's all about beauty. Now we're not going to do something complicated like Jonas Lai. We're going to do something really simple and anybody can do it. So I'm going to give you some advice. Don't be afraid. Just go with it. Don't think too much and you'll do fine. Everybody does. You just have to be brave and paint. Don't worry. Oh my, what just happened? I turned into a line drawing. Well, Follow me. I want to show you something. All artists start out their paintings with a line drawing. Something like our flower that we're going to do. You have to take something three-dimensional and turn it into a line. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. That will be our first step. Here we go. Well, here we are at our line drawing. And like I said, we're taking something three-dimensional and turning it into a flat drawing or two-dimensional. And just like Jonas Lai, his painting is impressionistic. We're doing an impression of a flower. This is a very loose kind of painting. And I'm going to pretend that my flowers are red roses. Now, when you're drawing your flower, you can just try and copy my, my drawing exactly, but on your own, you always want to have an odd number of objects in your painting to make a good composition. So I picked five because it's a small painting. Three might not be enough. Seven would be too many. So I've, I've done five rose-like flowers and I've done a very, very, a very loose drawing. And you know, if you don't have a sketch pad, you might have some printing paper at home. You could use that. And I'm not really worried about rounded edges or anything. I'm just, sometimes it's just simpler to do things ang angular. And then when you're painting, you can round it up a little bit. But here's, here's my painting. So what I'm going to do, this is step one. I'm going to take a picture of this and make a slide for you to pause the video and just, just look at it until you're ready to go on to step, step two. So let me just show you some of the materials we're going to be using today, and I hope that you have these at home. First of all, I have a small canvas, but if you don't have a canvas, you might have some watercolor paper at home or just some heavy duty construction paper. That's gonna be fine for today. I have a palette where you see I put some of my paint on already. This is a gray palette. I use gray because the colors just show better, but that's not necessary. A good old paper plate is fine. 
or even if you have some wax paper at home, that works. Brushes. I'm probably going to use a bigger brush today. But I have some brushes. Now, this I found in a utility drawer. So if you don't have any painting brushes at home, just look around in your junk drawers or in the basement and see if you can find a brush, something like this. If you get desperate, you could always use a toothbrush. It's a brush and it'll work. You need a container with water. And I have just four tubes of paint. And what we're doing is something called a limited palette. Especially when you're a beginner, you don't want too many colors. So I'm using a purple, a red or magenta, and a green for our leaves, and white. And that's it. And when you use a limited palette, your painting are more cohesive they come out they come out better looking more professional so the first thing we're going to do is practice and i'm just going to take a piece of watercolor paper to practice on we're going to practice just painting some flowers if you want you can just draw one just draw a little flower and i'm going to use this brush I love angle brushes because you could get an um you could make straight lines, round lines with them, all kinds of things. So you just get it a little bit wet, not too wet. And I'm gonna start with this magenta color. And we're gonna do just a simple paint stroke like this. Look at that. That looks like a flower already. I think I'll do another one just for fun. Cause we're gonna let we're gonna let it dry just a little bit. And it doesn't have to be the ends don't have to meet. It doesn't have to be super neat, because we're painting like an impressionist. And we know impressionism is the favorite art um, form in, in all museums, people love impressionism, especially Americans, because we like the boldness and the colorfulness of it. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of my white and I'm going to, I still have some pink on my brush. I'm just gonna mix that up a little bit to make a pinky color. And I'm gonna just do an inside. And I'm gonna overlap a little bit. And I'm gonna do that on this one. There we go. That's starting to look like a flower, isn't it? Now, I'm just gonna rinse my brush a little bit. And I like to have some paper towels on hand because you could just dry your brush if you have too much of the wrong color on there. I'm gonna take some of this purple and I'm gonna just put a center. There we go. And you can just experiment, you know, I'm going to stop and put this, this slide up and you can just experiment if you want to make it a little darker. If you're using other colors than I am, if you're using blues and yellows, just play around. The main thing is have some fun. Don't be afraid to experiment. Now's the time to experiment. As you can see now, I've transferred my drawing onto my canvas. It's not exactly, but it's close enough. And the first thing we're going to do is actually to do the background. Um, lots of artists like to do the background last, but in this particular drawing, painting, we're gonna do the background first because we're gonna put leaves and things over the background. So we don't want a lot of white space. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this magenta and a little bit of white. I'm gonna we're gonna make the background kind of light. And you don't have to mix it completely. It's okay if there's streaks of color in it. And we're just gonna start painting the background. And 
And I'm only using a little bit of water. I don't want too much water because then your paint becomes almost like a, a watercolor. And the beauty of acrylics is they're bold. Um, the boldness of their color and the and the thickness of it you get some kind to get some texture in your painting that's always a nice thing and that that's what the impressionists did they always had bold colors and there's a lot of texture they use something called a palette knife a lot of times to paint now I'm just using a big old brush and if you're using a toothbrush well you're going to get a lot of texture So I'm filling in all this background area. And you can see there's something called positive and negative space in the painting. You can see how nice the positive and negative space is already working in this. I think I'll just take that in like that a little bit. And it's okay to adjust as you're painting along. So there's our next step. And I'm going to pause for a second so you can catch up to me. Our next step is going to be to put in that vase. So I'm just going to wash my brush a little bit since I'm going to switch colors. Dry it a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely clean, just good enough. And I'm going to take a little bit of this purple and sometimes if you want, you can make your brush stroke go in the direction of the vase so if you want to make some lines like this to show just to show that it's round that's good You could go over it when your paint's still wet. You could go over it if you want to make your lines a little bit more unison-like. Might go like this. There. So there's the vase. And now, what we practiced before were the flowers. And I'll start our start up on the top because we'll let that vase dry a little bit. And I'm going to take. Fill my brush, as I say, you're going to unload my brush with some of this nice magenta paint. And I'm going to do the outside leaves, petals of the flower, not the leaves, the petals. See, I made another mistake. I'm going to put that on my blooper list that I'm calling petals leaves. So there's one. I'm going to do another one. And I know I'm painting kind of fast, so don't worry, I'm going to stop and you can just catch up. I'm a fast painter because I've been painting for a long time. And you see how I'm getting that nice texture in there? That really makes your painting look more lively. That's real impressionism. And so I'm going to make this flower go over that one, but under this one. And we'll have this little flower down here peeking through. There. Are one, two, three, four, five impressionistic flowers. We're looking good. Now you may notice that your acrylic paints dry pretty fast. 
if you want, if you want to let your your um, paint dry in between steps, that's fine. I sometimes like to do something called it's you do it in watercolors called wet and wet, where you paint while the paint's still wet and you kind of the colors kind of blend naturally. So I'm going to do that pink area of the flower now, and I think I need a little bit more white. We just squeeze a little white on there. I'll put some separate for later. Like I said, this is just the store brand and it's fine. It's perfect for your beginning endeavors. Yeah, I'm not over mixing too much and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do that, the inside petals. And if you want, you could turn your, your brush on the side that each one doesn't have to be the same width or thickness. Or even the same shade of pink. That's what makes it more exciting, that it's not all the same, that it's a little different in each flower. There we go. Now, I'm just gonna wash my brush a little bit. And I think I will do those purple centers. And I'm gonna do it while it's wet because the purple will cover it and it kind of blends a little bit, gives it a nice look. <clears throat> get a little bit of that purple on my brush. The funny thing about acrylic paint sometimes is that you always Squeeze out too much than you really need. You always think you need more than you do. But, okay, I'm going to put a little center in there. A little center in there. Another center. And another center. And I'm going to stop and let you catch up. Okay, for this last step, I... Put a little green on my palette. We're going to do the leaves, and I let I let it dry a little bit because I this time I really don't want my colors to mix too much. And I'm going to clean my brush, and this green I'm also going to. It's kind of a strong green. You might have a different green. I'm going to add a little white to it. I'm going to put in some of these leaves. You see with the tip of my brush, I can make like a, a little stem line in there. So. Then if you just kind of swirl your brush around, depends on what kind of brush you have, but put a little. This one I'm gonna go right up to the flower and just twist my brush a little bit. I think I'll put another leaf right there. I know I didn't draw it in, but I'm gonna add it anyway. There's another one. And I'm going to put one right in here in the center because I'm sure there's one there. And here's one more leaf. See how I'm kind of twisting and pressuring my brush a little bit to get that shape? Now there's a couple of, I'm going to take a good look at it and see, do I want to put a leaf anywhere else? And I think I do. I think I want to put one over here. And I think I want to put one up over here. This is, you know, 
Kind of take a look at your painting with a critical eye. And there we go. I'm going to take some pure green. Put that over there like that. Maybe one little leaf over here. That could cover up. It's on top of that one. And do you think we have enough leaves, everybody? How about one more? I think it's, I think this flower is looking for a leaf. We'll put it over here because we have that, we have that little white space to fill in. So we're going to put an overlapping leaf right there. One down here. And I think we need one right there. So there you go. There's our impressionistic painting. Good job, everyone. So that was a lot of fun. I just want to show you one thing. With that same technique that I showed you, you could create a painting just like this, and you can see it's the same technique. It's a red, a purple, white, and the only difference is a little yellow center. But you just keep repeating the pattern. And here's our purple vase. Our background's a little different. The green flowers. So if you practice and you want to do something bigger, you could do something like this. Try it at home. You'll be surprised at how well you do. Bye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the virtual visit. We'll see you soon. Thanks for stopping by.